How's it going everybody and welcome to my new series that I'm going to be starting on my YouTube channel. Now this series is called Manipulation School. In this series I'll be covering many topics such as... Yes, I'm not allowed to be frivolous. What? Let's try that again. In Manipulation School series, we'll be going over many topics such as lighting, highlights, blending, and all those sorts of things to help you guys further understand the manipulation style and how to pull it off. So for the first episode today, we're going to be focused on lighting and highlights. Now, the first example that we'll be using of lighting is these two soldiers that are in this sort of dark battle scene. And in here, we're just going to be focusing on using the one light source being the explosion in the top right hand corner. We're going to be lighting the soldiers to make sure that they fit the scene. Okay, so to start things off, let's quickly jump in and I'll quickly show you what is the actual, what the soldiers should be looking like, should I say. Uh, with the correct lighting and then we'll go over how we can actually do this So to start things off we'll quickly go into our little soldiers folder here and as you can see here we have heaps of different little uh, uh, Adjustment layers which help to get our required look so with all of them applied This is the final look that we are going to be going after and I'm pretty much going to be going over how I got this and how you guys can do it on anything that you apply to a uh, sort of character figure in your manipulations so when going for this desired look, the best thing to do is first look at your scene because you need to understand the scene in which you're trying to fit your character into. So we'll quickly just get rid of all these adjustment layers really quick. Okay, now first thing we do, we go to the adjustments tab up here and then we'll go exposure. Usually most scenes will be darker than your soldier, but sometimes it won't. So depending on which scene you're trying to fit your character or person, that's what you're gonna be using either darker or lighter exposure. So using Alt on the keyboard, we're going to quickly clip that onto our soldiers right there and then because the scene is darker, we're going to be putting the exposure down instead of up and then pretty much from here, we're just going to slide it till we pretty much, um, I'd say probably about there, yep. Now using Invert I, we can quickly invert the color on the layer mask and then from here, we use our white brush tool to go back over the areas that we want to actually be darker that isn't being hit from this light source here because we've got to remember that this is pretty much the only light source that the soldiers will be seeing. So this entire part of his arm, which is covered by pretty much nothing, so this is all going to be super dark. Maybe a little bit of light will be hitting the bottom here. But when doing this sort of stuff, you just got to consider what would be happening in real life. How would this affect someone if they were actually in a war or in a war zone or something like that where there's barely any light. You got to consider all the realistic factors. That's the hardest part about manipulation, sort of knowing what's right and wrong and how to sort of figure out um, what would be realistic and what isn't. And then if you do uh, mess, I'm not exactly mess up, but go over an area you didn't want to, just quickly grab out the brush that is on a black color and just quickly go back over and as you can see, it becomes lighter again. So this soldier's pretty much good, maybe a little bit in here because a little bit of light will be coming through here because his arm is there, so probably this bit's a little bit lighter. So for the second dude over here, we're pretty much going to be doing the exact same thing, just quickly going over all the bits that wouldn't be getting touched by the light. And also to mention guys, you don't need a fancy uh, drawing tablet or anything like that. I'm doing everything right now just with the mouse. The mouse does everything fine. You guys don't need to go out and buy anything expensive. You can do this with just a basic regular mouse. Alrighty, that's already looking better as we can see here. We've darkened it so that it is pretty much looking like the only light source is the explosion. Now, for colors, we can pretty much use two different techniques here. Depending on your scene and where everything is, you can do a different technique. So as we see here, we can use just an orange brush, which you can just go click on the bottom here and sample with your colors and then just click, click around where uh, your color is that you want to match uh, your soldier or whatever you're putting in to your scene. And you pretty much just want to pick a color. So we'll just go Maybe this bright orange and then just up that a little bit and then what we want to do is we want to get our brush out make sure it's on zero hardness so it's nice and soft and then up here we want to go to overlay and we just want to be going over the edges like this i know it's a bit bright at the moment but we don't need to worry about that just yet we can change the opacity in a sec but we just want to be going over the edges and actually getting the color of the explosion and with this you don't have to be too uh fancy or anything like that 
just making sure that the colors are hitting um, pretty much all the parts of the explosion would be because it's not going to be this bright it's going to be a lot uh, darker and then the parts that get further and further away obviously aren't going to be as strong because not as much light is hitting them so we can just erase that nicely like that do a nice little line here and then just erase it back with a zero hardness eraser just like that Put it there, put it there. All right, now pretty much we're just going to be going and sliding the opacity down nice and low. And already now we can see that the uh, color of the explosion is already starting to pop through a little bit more. We don't want it too crazy because that would just be unrealistic. We just want the color of the explosion to sort of be sitting on the soldier. Now from here, we can get another brush and just clip that back on top of the soldier again. And from here, because when explosions, they're um, usually different tones of orange and yellow. So we want to go for more like a bright sort of orange that sort of looks yellow but isn't. Uh, we want to put this one on linear, linear dodge add. And then pretty much we just want to be going over the edges. Nice and nice and pretty much like, I don't know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say rough, but nice and um, make it so it's nice and bright. I want all the edges to be lit up. These highlights are super, super nice and bright. And then we can just down the opacity nicely and that will blend together super nice, giving it that little yellow glow from the explosions. And then we go over this one more time with another brush that we're gonna clip back on top with a white brush, putting this one onto overlay. And here's where pretty much most of the magic happens. This is the hardest part. Um, not the hardest, but the uh, most painstaking part of lighting. So what we need to be doing here is we need to be thinking about the edges where the explosion will be just touching. We want to make that as bright as we can, but not. we don't want the whole thing to be like this. We want just the edges for here. We're also going to be considering that light does hit every single part of this soldier. So we don't just want the edges. We need to be going into the actual soldier inside the image getting everything that would be getting hit by the light. Now, when I say everything, I mean literally everything. If you want manipulation to be photorealistic, then you need to be going over everything that would be getting hit in real life. A good thing to do when trying to do this is get other images that are actually real life images that are in the same sort of scene and sort of model how they look. Uh, get how realistic they look and sort of take the same um, look that they have and try and put that into the scene that you're in because your scene might not have any explosions in it so all you have to do is find a real image and then you can just sort of model it off that to see what is real and what isn't what you should be doing to your soldier to make it look like the one that you are looking at but pretty much that's what you're going to be going over just constantly doing that sort of stuff and your desired image should come out something like this now, as we can see here, I've sort of skipped a little bit, but we've gone over pretty much everything we've drawn in all the little details, drawn all those sorts of little things, but that's all you're pretty much going to be doing for your soldiers. And I've added a little bit more rocks, explosions, sparks, and I've added a little bit of camera roll filter on it just to make it look that little bit nicer. But that's our first example for today. I didn't want to go too over depth because we're going to be doing different examples for different sort of scenes. So guys, for the second example, we're going to be doing a uh, logo lighting sort of uh, scene because I know a lot of you guys have been seeing um, my sort of work that you're probably coming here to watch this episode for. So you know that I do a lot of uh, logo sort of manipulations. So to start this off, the first thing that we want to be doing is checking the actual scene and see where the lighting is from here. As we can see, we've got a really bright light source up in the top part here, which is pretty much going to be shooting light this sort of direction. Um, and as we can see, it's hitting the rocks down the bottom here so that all these parts of the rocks are not getting hit by the light. All the light is trapped there and it's only hitting here. So now that we've understanding where the lighting is, now we can actually start uh, making it look like it's part of the scene. So the first thing we want to do is usually I start with the shadows. So we can start um, quickly clipping it on the 2D part, which has already got a texture clipped on top of it. Just a basic texture, it doesn't need to be anything to the top. So we're just going to be lighting the texture real quick. So pretty much this part of the logo, the bottom half, um, yeah, I'd say the bottom half needs to be darker. So we'll just go over with a nice uh, black brush and just a normal black brush at the moment with uh, zero hardness. Just going over sort of like this. Um, there'll be a little bit in here. Probably not that much, and then we can just erase these little bits in here. It's gonna mess up that bit. It's about right. And then we'll sort of just down the opacity on that so that's a little bit darker. But then probably go over it again with another brush tool that we're just gonna clip on top using Alt on our keyboard. 
just going over this half and darkening the entire thing. Now you could also do a uh, exposure layer like I showed you in the first example, but for this one we're just going to be using brushes. And now we're going to be doing the brighter parts. Now this is sort of, um, I'd say it's more of a white-ish blue light, like there's nothing too yellow about it, it's not like a sunset sort of look. So we'll just be going over it nicely again with a, just a normal brush. Then we'll probably just go over it nicely just like this. Sort of rough, nothing too crazy. And then just downing the opacity again, sort of to just like a nice light sort of glow on the top. And then we're going to be going over it with an overlay. Not soft light, oops. Overlay and then going back over that with another white brush. And we're going to be probably downing the opacity. Now see here, the light wouldn't actually be hitting this part, it would just be missing it. And then it would hit the bottom part here. Get a little bit of the corner, but not too much of it, because the light was pretty much going to start dropping off into shadows. After that, and we'll just down the opacity again. There we go. Now, because the light's actually quite strong, we probably want another just big sort of uh, glow on the top here. That we can just turn into overlay. Don't put a lock on it. I didn't mean to do that. There we go. So we've got that sort of glow coming on top of the logo now. And another cool thing that you can do is when you've got your uh, your 2D part of the logo, you can always put a bevel and boss on. Uh, don't have you just have the default one. Don't need anything special, or anything like that. And then we just usually put the size to about I don't know. It doesn't really matter. It depends on what your logo is more. And then we want this to usually be on overlay and have that at about 50, and then have this one at about 52. So this is our shadows, we don't want them to be too hard or too, like, uh, we, want to, we don't want them to be way too dark or way too bright either. So we just want our overlay to just be nice and soft, nothing too hard. Nice, yeah, this bit would also be getting a little bit of light coming from up the top there. And we can also do a cool little thing, whereas we can angle the light down the bottom where it says shading here, we can angle the light from the, the direction that it would actually be hitting. So probably about there, yep. And then it's giving our logo some more depth more. Now pretty much what I would do from here is just a small bit of lighting on the 3D part, nothing too crazy, because uh, most of the lighting's pretty much done, to be honest, it's just already darkened, as it's uh, that's pretty much what you do with the 3D part. Just some nice glow, pretty much, just from the light that would be hitting here, and on the side. And there we go, so that's pretty much the lighting done for this one, maybe just a little bit more shading at the bottom here, because pretty much at the bottom there'd be no light hitting here, so it would be pretty much pitch black at the bottom part. And then just because we want to define the edges a little bit more, we'll quickly grab a polygon lasso tool, and we'll just draw the edges pretty much like this, and then grab a black brush tool and just that and then grab the polygon lasso tool again and line these two edges up and then just go like this and then we can just darken not darken it down the opacity and that gives it a little bit more of that bricky sort of look so that is that part done there so i hope you guys have enjoyed this manipulation series this is my first episode and i'm still trying to learn how to make good videos so if you guys give me some feedback i can definitely improve and I can also make more of sort of what you guys are after. This is my first sort of episode, so we're just trying to figure out what everyone wants to watch. But I hope you guys have enjoyed. Um, I'll leave all my socials down in the description, including my portfolio, Twitter, and all that, if you guys want to go have a look at my work. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy, and I guess I'll be seeing you guys in the next one.